Hey everyone, before we dive into the episode today, I just wanted to make a quick announcement that the Art to Life free workshop is coming up. And it begins February 13th. It's five days long. And to enroll, you can go to artlifefree.com. This is where I'll be sharing over five days, some amazing art making information, basically three of the six arts life principles, and it can radically change your art. In five days, you will be amazed at how you can see and develop a new approach to making your art stronger and getting unstuck. It's really, really fun, and it's going to be an awesome time. So artlifefree.com, check it out. Okay, let's get to the episode. It builds you, it connects you to yourself, this unknown aspect. It's a part of yourself. And if you listen to it, it can give you information about your art and about the right steps you need to take. And it's felt. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to the Art to Life podcast. So I've been noticing with all my friends and things I'm reading on Instagram and certainly comments in a lot of the posts. There's a lot of challenges right now and a lot of just thoughts around what's happening, what's coming in our art, in in the economy. and, And there's a lot of unknown. And I wanted to talk about the unknown today because this is something that's different in art as compared to life. And I think it's helpful to get your hands around unknown in creativity. Welcome to Art to Life, a podcast for the creatively curious. My name is Nicholas Wilton, and each week I'll help you rediscover not just the art of your life, but the art in your life. Join me as we explore that perfect blue at twilight, the wild frontiers of art making, and the extraordinary joy of finding your way as you go. So when things are unknown, when we think in the world like, tidal wave is coming or a lot of the stuff around the pandemic and traveling and we lose our jobs and we don't know if we're going to get another one. And anything that brings up uncertainty, generally speaking, is kind of challenging. So anything that we, that's unknown, there's an implication that it's, it's not controllable which it isn't when you look out in the world, everything from natural disasters to he waves. We had a huge challenge here in the Bay Area and in, in California, you know, like last summer and the summer before that, just unbelievable drought and fires raging and never knowing when one of these is going to start and horrendous, terrifying. It relates to our making because we don't know when we look at where we are now and where we might want to be, especially in the beginning that maybe no one's going to like this work and it's not known, or maybe it'll never get out there. Maybe what I'm doing won't ever see the light of day, you know, like these thoughts of not knowing, and we're always looking for confirmation and that's just uncertainty. And I get that that's scary and we don't want that. I I understand that. But when there's unknown in our art, push comes to shove, we tend to err on the side of it not happening. If there's something we want and we want to get our work out there or we want to do something in our art, our creativity, if we can't see it yet and it's unknown, which it is, then you tend to default to it's not possible because there's a habit of kind of staying away from unknown. We're taught that. I mean, it makes sense. You know, it's like if the path's not lit, take another one, you know, but this is so different in art. I remember when I was wanting to teach a workshop, I remember the first time I was going to do an art workshop 
And I really wanted to do this and I wanted to teach it. And I wanted to teach it at Esalen, California. It's this amazing retreat center. Some of you have taken workshops from me there. That's where I've taught workshops for years and years and years. And it's where I started. It was a big question mark. I didn't know that I would be able to. I didn't know of what I was going to teach anyone would be interested in. It was just a kind of desire. And for many years, I couldn't see it. And so... I didn't know about it. And so I avoided it and put off and it was too big of a step. And actually what changed it, it's crazy, was a friend who taught Tai Chi there for years. Uh, His name was Ken and he had been going there a long time and I knew him just as a friend. And he was the one who said, you know, listen, he wasn't an artist and he's saying, listen, I think you would this would be great. I think you would do really well there. You seem like the kind of person. And he didn't really even know what I did art wise, but he liked me and he, he thought the people there would like me and that I could do this. And it was his, me borrowing the possibility from him that I could do this, that gave me the impetus to ask. And I did eventually. I mean, literally, it took a number of years before I got up the courage to do this. And I did. And then they said, well, we need to see what are you going to teach? And and that started the investigation of, well, I'm going to obviously teach art. That's all I really know about. And I'd been going through a lot of struggles at the time around my own art. And I had learned some things by myself and taking things I learned in art school. But the way I was repackaging it for myself kind of it was helpful. It was helping me. And so I basically laid out (laughs) the art to life process, the art to life principles, pretty like how I did this. This is when I was like in my twenties. And anyway, I then taught the workshop and I taught it to people that were not actually, there was maybe someone mildly interested in art, but because the course was offered at a tremendous discount to the people that worked there. A lot of those people came. I had like six people in the first workshop and they weren't artists. I think maybe one was, but there was like a gardener and the person who, you know, worked in the, you know, cleaning the facility. And it was great. And we had a great time and they actually made progress and it was, you know, and then the next one got better and everything. But I'm telling you this story because this is sort of a a tip here that, The unknown, we've been trained to avoid it. So a tip here is if if you're chasing something to just make any part of it known, just a corner of it, just a tidbit. I mean, the fact that this guy, Ken, gave me the image that this could work and I believed him (laughs) was enough to move me a little further to, so I know it. Again, you know, I teach this idea of taking small steps in our art. Just moving towards what it is, is tremendously helpful. You don't have to have all the confidence in the world, especially around the unknown and the giant question marks. You just have to take a small step just to make a little bit of it known. So then you can creep out closer to it. So there's a way to reframe this unknown thing. And I, and I want to talk about this because it's not spoken a lot in teaching art. Unknown is avoided at all costs, the unknown, the mystery, but in art, and th- this is unknown. Let me say this. This is unknown from the external, the external unknown outside of ourselves, those things that happen to us. That's so terrifying. I don't know, you know, if I'm, my car is going to break down and I'm not going to get there or it's so stormy. I'm thinking of my father coming to my 50th birthday and I wanted him to be there so bad. And he was living in Oregon and he was going to come, but there was this storm and he had to go over the, over the pass coming out of Ashland, Oregon. And, and his eyesight wasn't so good. And I so wanted to be there. And I was, it was just this big question mark all week. Is he going to come? Is he going to be there? You know, like this was, this was a big deal. It was just men. I just invited men to this birthday party and I wanted him so bad. And there was just a lot of anxiety around it. And there was no way to know. And there was no possible way to plan for it. It ended up, it was storming that night and he tried and had to turn back. And um, so that's the kind of unknown that creates stress and, and is worrisome. But there's also the internal unknown. And this is entirely different. 
And so I want to talk a little bit about this and how you might think about it in your art. The internal unknown is where everything is derived from. The unknown in your art, in your person, in what you're making is where you source all the amazing things that's going to come from your art. The unknown in yourself is good. The unknown, and I know there's leftover anxiety because we want to know, <laughs> but the unknown in yourself is where intuition comes in. It's where mystery comes in. You see, we don't get to know what we're going to make in our art ahead of time. And we can kind of plan it. <laughs> you know, we can look outside of ourselves and see what other people are making and sort of say, well, I, I'm kind of like a cross between this person and that person and a little bit of that person thrown in. And that's kind of comforting. <laughs> but really the invitation is to go deeper into this uncertainty to the unknown part of yourself. This is where everything that you can't imagine, which is all the amazing things, all the incredible breakthroughs, you can't plan it, you know, and this is what our art making teaches us. So there's this idea that when we think outside of ourselves in our life, right, those three modes of being, there's the mode of things just happen to me <laughs> randomly, right? And then, you know, I mean, I'm just walking around and just life just stuff happens. Life happens to me. That's kind of like the low, a little bit of a sort of like, I don't know, baseline. And it's tricky if you, if you're in that a lot, I find for myself, I feel kind of victimized, you know, it's like, oh, my day is just going so bad. Or of course, today the car is going to break down or this is going to happen to me. Or, you know, of course, you know, my paint is going to fall off the canvas of all days is happening today. And, why this is tricky and be, can be kind of a tiresome place is because there's no responsibility on yourself. It's just stuff's happening to you, to you random, right? And then there's sort of, there's a more empowered place, right? And, and of course, we all go through all these phases. I mean, I've spent so much time and just, I feel like everything's just piling on top of me and this sucks, you know? But then there's, you kind of get out of that and and then it's like, I can do this. You know, I think I can actually change my situation. No one else is going to help. I think I can do this. In fact, I'm going to do this. And there's a little bit more empowerment to this kind of mode that you enter where life happens by me. Life happens by something I'm going to do. I'm being proactive. And this is much, much better. Like I learned that I can improve. I can get in galleries and I can sell my work and it's not random. It turns out it's not, it's not the luck of the draw. I mean, I know we see people out there that at a kind of level that, you know, someone's doing a certain particular thing and they never heard it before and it, and it hits the, you know, it just becomes the popular thing in the fine art world and it's millions of dollars. Like, I'm not really talking about that. I'm talking about in general, just when work is really strong, which is what we teach at Art to Life, like how to get your art stronger. It resonates to more people. More people want to buy it. More people want to take it home and hang around it. And you get to learn how to do that and understand that. And that was a huge comfort for myself that I could change the outcome of this whole project, you know? And so that's really great to like, remember that if you feel like things are happening to you, you're not in an empowered place and to step more fully into taking responsibility for all of it, all of it's happening because of the energy you bring to it and knowing you can change it is kind of amazing because you can. And that takes a different kind of energy and a different kind of perspective. And it's cooler for people to hang around with people like that because you're doing a thing. <laughs> and these are the people that I like to try and interview and I want to know and get inspired. They're inspiring, right? But then there's this third level and it kind of relates to what we're talking about today. That life happens through me and this is different and it relates to this whole idea of the unknown, 
that the source of what we're going to create, the source of our amazing direction and, and our journey of our art making and what we're here to do in our life is sourced through the unknown part of ourselves and that we get to look inside of that. And if we're willing to be comfortable with it, if we can sit with it and not override it with, with a plan all the time and our expertise, right? Like we all have expertise. We all have abilities that we learn, you know, we learn color, we learn, we look at all kinds of work out there and we've made our art and we know how to make it successfully. And so we hold to that, right? But letting ourselves wander into the area of the unknown with a mystery and sit with that and pay attention to that and feel what needs to come out and stay connected to that is really, really, really super powerful. And it creates amazing work. The unknown and how you address this, if you can hold it long enough, if you can sit with it and make your art, the process of making things is what starts to make it known. And this is a great thing to remember because you can't figure it out sitting at a table, you know, in your kitchen necessarily. It comes from the making. It comes from doing. And it comes from not trying to control everything. If you understand that, it's kind of, you can relax into it a little bit. I used to plan my paintings, my large work. You know, I started out making art as an illustrator and I had to show everyone a comp <laughs> of what I was going to do. You know, I'd have these crazy ideas and I'd have to draw them for people and convince them. And, and it kind of had to end up, well, it really had to end up looking a lot like what I sketched because they were not comfortable with uncertainty. You know, it was really interesting. In fact, the better projects that I made, the best illustration, which to be honest, most of it wasn't very interesting, but you know, three or four things I made a year were pretty cool. And it definitely related to the person I was working with. If the person I was working with, the art director or whatever, gave me freedom, was comfortable with the unknown, then I would be able to do something that I could be in the moment and make something that surprised even myself. I don't know if you know the book cover, The Four Agreements. And I, I mentioned this a lot because it's like the one thing I did that got out there in the world. It's the book cover by, uh, Don Miguel Ruiz. He wrote, he wrote The Four Agreements. That was a perfect example. Like that. When you think of the four agreements, there is no way that, and there's, I used four flowers for it, four lotus flowers. There is no way any art director would have approved that idea for that cover. And that cover really worked. And the reason it, it wouldn't have been approved is because it wasn't necessarily logical. It was more intuitive and more, more felt that I felt this was when I read the text and it, and I, you know, and it works. I mean, it's things sold a gajillion copies. So I started out needing a plan or I got used to using a plan. So when I went into making my fine art, which was more and more open, which I realized was so exciting, the direct, you know, I noticed in my whole life that the more freedom I got, the more willingness I was able to give myself that freedom, that spaciousness to not know a little bit, the better the work became. It became harder to make, but it became way more interesting. And it was better. It was clearly better. Some of the things I made, just a handful of the things I made like that when I had that freedom, those were the ones that got in awards or got in galleries or got in exhibitions, right? So it was very apparent to me that this idea of freedom was so important. But even on my large paintings, I used to figure it out ahead of time and I would come up with a plan. I would work in Photoshop and kind of work it out. And there's nothing wrong with doing this. I first want to make that perfectly clear. I'm sharing a process that I used. And, and what we're talking about is embracing the unknown, 
embracing what's emerging and not strangling it with certainty too soon. It's a little like a house, right? If you build a really amazing foundation, you spend time doing that and figure it all out, then you can have an amazing house. But if you, if you start on the walls too soon and you don't just do that foundation, then the thing just isn't like, it's not built well. It doesn't, it doesn't, can't become something really, really significant. So it's a little bit like that. We can so easily shortchange ourselves by just feeling we have to know all the time. We, we do this in our life. Like it makes sense. We have to know the plane's going to arrive on time. We have to know what's going to happen. You know, tell me, tell me, tell me. But this is so powerful to let some of this mystery, some of the dark internal world of yourself, the doors that you don't open, let it come out. Let it slowly come out. It's felt and it's so, so good. There's a relationship between the amount of uncertainty and an unknown you're willing to hold and the amount of incredible new surprising developments in your art and your life that result. I remember when I had a big upset about 15 years ago and lost all money and the economy pulled back and it was really, really a, a train wreck in my life. And, uh, my marriage fell apart. Oh, it was just brutal. We had a, like a made off type situation and I'd saved up all this money and we lost all that. And I've spoken about this before because it really was when I started learning and everything everything in my life was unknown. I didn't know where I was going to (laughs) move. I didn't know what was really how my family was going to survive this. I didn't know where I was going to make enough money to pay for the kid's school and pay for this mortgage that we had. I didn't know. I had another business at the time we made with partners and it was a gift business. And we my need for certainty, it was like a hedge. I'm like, well, if illustration doesn't work out, I can, I'll have this side business. And I started it and I worked on weekends and my ex-wife and I were killed ourselves to do this business, but it was with another couple. And it was a gift business with all my art on it, on all these boxes and mirrors and stuff. And anyway, that didn't work. And I mean, it worked, it was successful, but we didn't get along with our partners and their need for control didn't jive with what I wanted to do. We had different ideas of where it was going. I mean, they just have a different idea anyway. And so that thing was falling apart and I didn't know what was going to happen to that at the time. And so there was, I don't think there was anything left (laughs) that was not unknown. And this is when the only thing I sort of found solace in was my art. And I knew that I knew how to do that. And I knew that nobody could take that away from me. So I started making this. I started leaning into my art more than ever before. And the anxiety I felt about the uncertainty in my life was calmed by the unknown uncertainty in my art, it was different. I felt like there was something emerging from it. And I didn't know what, but I knew when I was working. And I, I want you to check this out. Like when you're actually working, when you're making things and you can hold this control of, you know, like there's an aspect of yourself that needs, that has expertise in this. And then there's an aspect of yourself that can embrace the unknown. And we want to have both. I mean, in a way, one is control and one is intuition, right? But we want to hold both. And I was able to do that. And what emerged at that time was a sense that my life was happening through me, that even though on the outside, (laughs) it was a train wreck, I mean, disaster. I'll never forget it. It was, it was such a dark period of my life. But even though on the outside, it was so bewildering and dark and I had so little hope for that, the art making brought me back to the surface. The uncertainty in the art making connected me to myself and it gives you confidence. It builds you. It connects you to yourself, this unknown aspect. It's a part of yourself. And if you listen to it, 
It can give you information about your art and about the right steps you need to take. And it's felt. And what occurred, what was evolving was art to life. That's what began in that time. That this lesson that I was learning was so powerful that this could be added to what I was helping people with. This was so interesting to me. And that's what happened. And then I started sharing this more and more and more and Art to Life began and we brought the workshop and, you know, we talk about risk. It's one of the Art to Life principles. This is the, was the beginning of that. That's the unknown. And it's one of the principles because it's necessary. We need it like we need design. We need it like we need value and color. It's essential part of art. And we need it because it creates the space for the new thing to emerge, the new part of it. So it's always about balancing those two things, the expertise, the, your ability to control things and your ability to hold uncertainty and unknown. But that reframe, if you know that that scary feeling that you see in your world that you try and avoid is actually crucial to your art making. And that's the stuff that makes your art extraordinary. I think that will be an amazing contribution to your journey. It's changed the course of my art, my life, the direction we're going in art to life. It informs everything. And I think it's also really accessible for others, right? When I tell you, I don't actually really know what I'm doing. It gives me some authority to talk. You know, people who think they know it all, it's not interesting. Like I'm still forming, I'm still figuring it out. And I love finding my way as I go. And that's actually what this podcast is all about. <laughs> you know, now I think about it, that was where I started a year or two ago. So it's also really great to do it with others and to share this journey with other people. So I just really appreciate you guys being here each week and sharing this. If you guys could leave a review. I would love that or share this with somebody. Also, if you go to the Art to Life website, artslife.com, there's a pl place to leave a comment. I'm working on some ways that I can have you guys more easily give, ask some questions and give feedback so we can have more of a conversation. But I'm kind of tracking stuff out there and the things we're talking about in the, on the vlog and so forth. So that's what, where I got this topic today. And it's something that I just think it's important to remember you guys next week on Monday, the 13th, we're starting the free art to life workshop. This is the big free thing we do every year. It's five days long for those of you who are new here. If you go to a2lworkshop.com and click on the link there, you can enroll. This is where I'm going to be going over the Art to Life principles. I cover the first three in depth and it's really designed to give you a big win and get you so you can start seeing your art in a way so you can make changes and improve it. It's really amazing. It's one of my favorite times of the year and we do it right before we launch the Creative Visionary Program. But I'll go way into that at the end of next week, all about that. But Right now, I would love it for you to join the free workshop. We've got an amazing Facebook group. We've got thousands of people in there from all over the world. I'm sharing all kinds of stuff. We're basically teaching our heart out, <laughs> myself and my team. It's going to be amazing. We do a 6 a.m. email with this really cool video that is really concise. And then at 12 noon, we do an in-studio live training each day of the week. So it's a big deal. So I hope you come along and join me for that. You guys, please leave a comment, send this along to a friend or a review. I love hearing from you guys. Thanks so much for being here. All right. I will see you next week. Okay. Thanks. Hey, thanks for listening to the Art to Life show. If you enjoyed the podcast, please help me get the word out by sharing it with your friends on Instagram at art to life underscore world. The recording of this and all episodes, along with a place to leave comments, see additional photos, and discover a whole new approach to making art, can be found by going to arttolifepodcast.com. And secondly, if you could leave a rating and review in whatever app you're listening on today, I would super, super appreciate it. It makes a big difference. And last but not least, before you go, if you'd like to be on my artist list, every Sunday morning I send out a video blog all about art making. 
go to arttolifepodcast.com to sign up. And all these links are in the show notes, of course. Thanks so much for being here and we'll see you next week. Yeah.